Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about the brand new Terramaster F4422 and it's their latest 4 bay NAS that's arrived on the scene which has got a lot to live up to. It's not going to be the most groundbreaking NAS but in terms of affordability it makes it very hard to argue with this device being the next NAS or at least the first NAS for those of you looking at 10 GBE in a much more cost effective way. This device arrives at about the 420, 430 quid mark and is a four bay Intel powered 10 GBE NAS. That's right, for the going rate of this NAS, which is competing with a lot of budget four bay options from the likes of Synology and QNAP and Acer store, this four bay arrives with a quad core CPU inside, it arrives with DDR3 memory, 2 gig I believe, and on top of that, it arrives with that 10 GBE LAN and the support of modern NAS appliances in the first and third party software. So, whether you're a first party user that wants to take advantage of BTRFS, background snapshots, RAID, um, a multi tiered backup strategy utilizing cloud, UP, um, a USB, or NAS to NAS backups, or if you want to take advantage of third-party applications like iTunes, Plex Media Server, or some of the DLNA media streaming, this has you covered. It even has support of containers, and although there is a little bit of VM support, it's probably not great. If you look at all the different kind of NAS brands in this sector, this one, in terms of virtual machines, is lower down the pecking order, but it is still an excellent solution, and for a 4 by RAID 10 solution, I'm sorry, a 10 GBE solution, this device does bring a lot to the table. And if you add to that, the fact that if you have hard drives inside this device in maybe a RAID 5 environment, so you've got four standard class RAID, uh, rated drives, you're going to get four or 500 meg out of it very, very easily. The minute you go into those enterprise sector drives, you're looking at, you know, 600, close to seven. And of course, SSDs, you are going to be looking at getting very close to maxing out that 10G connection with the right rate configuration and file format. But let's take a look at this device. Now, for those of you that have watched this channel before, you'll know that I have looked at Terramaster products before. We've got a box there, and I think we've got one near the top. And again, Terramaster was one of the brands that I covered quite early in this channel's history, largely because there's lots of brands out there in NAS. You've got the very, very, very top tier, your HPs and your kind of clear data center high end. Then the next tier you have your Synology and your QNAP that are starting to really, really bite the toes of those top brands out there. And then you have this third tier with lots of brands kind of scrapping it out between them. And over the years, we've seen kind of the clear contenders pulling through and starting to make their way into that shared tier with Synology and QNAP. They've got a little work to do with the software, but brands like Terramaster and Acer Store have pulled up higher than everyone else right now, leaving companies like Drobo, Thekus, and more just, just dying in the dirt, really, which is a real shame. But this device here, the reason I like Terramaster products is you do get a very solid honest product and I know honest is a weird word to use in this context let me explain if you look at the official specs pages of Terramaster's kind of NAS product pages their own official ones if you compare them again against Synology QNAP and Acer Store they do seem to be a lot more grounded they could say oh it's a 10 GBE box we'll give you a thousand megs easily great but they don't their speeds they show on screen utilize standard NAS hard drives and say these drives will give you five to six hundred meg. They don't try to promise you something out of the realm of standard use. Of course if you do use SSDs you are going to get that high speed and that CPU inside I have used in other NAS um, with four bays and got that 1000 megs before so it's not impossible but once you read through it and the number of applications that are supported and effectively what it brings to the table it just feels very modest it just feels very this is what we do we're not going to lie we're just going to tell you what we can do and it's kind of been an ongoing thing with Terramaster about that because even though they are um i still think a budget brand when you look at the pricing structure against the big boys i'd still say they are quite a, an, an honest brand overall um inside the accessories box We've got our external PSU, and again, this PSU is external, so 
I know a number of you don't really like external PSUs. Do you think they might get disconnected or fall out? Me personally, I do like external power bricks. I think much easier to replace in the, in the case of an RMA if you're in warranty. And it removes the heat being generated from inside your NAS. On top of that, we've got our external mains lead. On top of that, we've got the screwdriver, which I always love talking about, which I'll get onto in a bit. Screws for installing the hard drives. We've got a cat cable there um rj um is it a cat 5e cable oh no it is a cat 6 cable and again i respect that they've included a cat 6 cable when a lot of other nas brands do include cat 5e and because this is a 10 gbe box you might actually notice the difference there on top of that rubberized feet extras screws for two and a half inch media so ssds labels for hard drives which i've never really understood and of course, information with regards to your warranty and your first time in installation guide and setup link there online. So standard information for most NAS brands, no more accessories in there. Um, I said I'd mentioned the screwdriver. And again, if you have watched this channel before, you'll know that one of the things I like uh, about TerraMaster is this little screwdriver they include inside. And I know that's quite an Eastern thing. And when you buy a lot of solutions or particularly when you buy like flat pack furniture, they have a tendency to include tools. One of the things I like is the screwdriver I got from the very first Terra Master I unboxed on this channel has been in my bag now for years. It is a very solid, it's a standard screwdriver, but I just quite like the fact that I still carry it. And I've got like four or five of these now. But again, I like the brand, which I know it seems like I'm being overly enthusiastic about Terra Master here. But it's just as a brand, I quite like what they've got going on. I think they're quite a nice rhetoric about them. They haven't paid me to say that. I just... The brands that I talk about on this channel, there aren't a huge number. I don't try to be too diverse about the NAS brands because there's a lot of budget out there and some real dodgy ones as well. Um, so I try to stick to the ones that I would personally use, and I do. Um, more um, you know, observant people may have noticed in the past, there's this little Terra Master sitting there at the back. That's an old um, USB 3.1 Gen 2 backup model and i use that as another tier of my backup strategy right now there's a laptop recording this audio and that runs as a live sync backup into a das box there as well as a nas backup happening over there in real time and again i do use the terra master i don't use the terra master nas for the the main scale backup but i do use some of their solutions in my own working environment so again i wouldn't have them here on the channel if i didn't like them but if we have a look at the unit and take a good look at the Terramaster F4, if my light's not going mental, F4422. Now, this device, let's get it out of the way, is probably not the best looking NAS out there. There's one of the things about Terramaster I've never really been able to deal with. It's their design. <clears throat> um, I don't quite, I don't like this chassis. I like the 5 bay. The 5 bay seems a lot more streamlined. Uh, there's a 5 by 10 GBE version of this that was released uh, late last year. And that, I really like the chassis that arrives in. I think it's a lot tighter, it's a lot fuller. And maybe it's because they're reusing certain assets, like the production line, to keep things affordable, like the fans <clears throat> or the external casing. And therefore, they're committed to this size. But I'm not a big fan of these big spaces here on the side, because... <clears throat> They're not really bringing much in terms of ventilation, and they just make the device a little bit dated looking, in my opinion. But, if you move forward from that, we've got LEDs there on the side of the device to give you real-time information about the internal storage media, and network uh, connectivity and system status power button too. But no USB button there on the front, uh, USB port even. The trays themselves, although they have improved over the years, are still... You know, quite plasticky in design. There's no click and load. You will have to manually install your hard drives inside there. It does support the very latest um, SATA-based hard drives. So that's your 16TB Seagate Ironwolf NAS hard drives. And although they're not the biggest hard drives out at the moment, with 18TB coming soon, they are still probably, for me, the best NAS drives out there right now in terms of performance. Um, if we remove all of those drives, we can have a look inside. And you can utilise this device with a single hard drive if you like and then add drives as you go the raid is set up by the software tos that the device arrives with we've got those sata bays inside there at the back and the ventilation fan on the rear to pull that lovely air over the drives and keep things cool on the inside that's about it really for that internal board 
The, uh, there is a memory module that you can utilize to upgrade this device to more memory. We'll talk about that uh, on the next video. If we look at the rear, we can see those two rear fans there. And we have got USB 3 uh, to utilize supported peripheral devices. So again, external storage drives, UPS, UPS um, USB printers, kind of a heartbeat monitoring system. But bear in mind, that you're going to use these for storage to be honest and although there is no official expansion to this device i will say that it does you can make external storage or you know standard usb drives network accessible within about three clicks as well as adding a scheduled usb backup or differential backup or synced backup from this device to your drives and vice versa we've got two one gbe lan ports there which provide us with one gbe each so 100 megabytes each which can be link aggregated to bring us up to 2GBE or around 200 megabytes with a supported switch. But the real kicker is that one down there, the 10GBE LAN port now. Now that 10GBE LAN port means you are going to be able to edit files on this device if you've got fast enough media. So definitely editing raw photos, but raw video, Mm, you might be hitting a the cusp there. Make sure you are utilizing fast enough media. So again, 7200 RPM drives with a decent level of cache, at least 256 megabytes of cache. Or if you're using SSDs, you will have to use SATA. So right now, although you can get 8 TB, um, two and a half inch SATA SSDs, what I would say is they use a QLC NAND and the performance and endurance does dip accordingly. So try to aim directly at TLC NAND, triple layer NAND, so again, 4 TB is kind of your max there. So you're looking at 16 TBs raw or 12 TBs in a RAID 5 with SSD. And with hard drives, 64 terabytes raw or 48 terabytes in a RAID 5 environment. It does support RAID 5, RAID 6, RAID 10, and of course RAID 0 and RAID 1. It's a lots of options open to you. And the device can be set up uh, quite easily utilizing a standard PC or Mac system. There's even the ability to set this device up with a mobile app as well for the first time, which is quite cool, something that only Synology offer at the moment. Now, I touched on this earlier on. It does also arrive with BTRFS as a file system of choice. You don't have to use it. You can use um, ext4 if you choose. BTRFS allows snapshots to be um, um, actioned with lesser system resources being used, as well as file self-healing, with checksums being generated every uh, transaction, and therefore data can be... Uh, referred back to the original checksum and effectively healed. On top of that, you've also got shared folder duplication made near enough instantaneously, which is quite good when you want to create directories for connected users. And it does have uh, a multi-user, multi-group, multi-application floating point. <clears throat> Such a sore throat today, I'm really sorry. So ultimately it means this device does bring a lot of features and functionality to the table with TOS having regular updates all the time. And uh, we have done software overviews and we will be revisiting the TOS software on this device very, very soon because we will be doing speed tests on the F4 as well as doing a software overview of TOS on this device just to see where we're at with the newest generation of that TerraMaster operating system software. But I've already reviewed and bench tested and speed tested the 5 bay of this device. It utilizes the same CPU, which is the J3455, a quad-core based processor, and that CPU is 1.5 gigahertz that can be burst up to 2.3 per core, and that's HD Graphics 500, and that means AES encryption. That includes a transcoding engine for 1080p and 4K, and it arrives with that great floating point to multitask quite a lot. Now the memory inside, again, I believe it's two gig of memory by default that could be upgraded to eight, overall in maximum and that's ddr3 memory so you've got a lot of potential there and remember that 420 430 quid price point that is very very affordable for a 4 by 10g solution and 10g whether you're using a thunderbolt 10 gb adapter or you have dedicated 10 gbe ports on your pc or mac system that means you can directly connect to the nas and edit files directly on it as well as utilizing the 1 gbe ports to create a create, um, your workflow for other distributive users, those that are creating the metadata, those that are receiving the finished encoded product that you've stored on the NAS, and then they can do more with it. And thanks to things like non-linear editing and a multi-tiered backup solution like this, you can really reinvent your entire workflow of uh, post-production and allow you to scale things back 
to a three system workflow uh, thereby saving money and saving time so I'm going to save any full review of the TOS operating system until we've seen how it works on this but given its similarity in hardware architecture to the F5422 I think we're going to be quite pleasantly impressed I think with the exception of the design which I'm less keen on I think everything else about this device brings a lot to the table for the budget I've just noticed there's even a sticker on the top to give you support if I don't know how well that's going to come across there on the camera but if you do have tech support needs they've attached the email address of tech support and the information there about getting your tech support there's even plenty of ventilation on the base of the device so a lot of the design of network attached storage over the years is present here and in an affordable form from a relatively young brand compared with their competitors i'm not going to say it's perfect and i'm not going to say it's better than in terms of hardware architecture than a much more expensive device what i'm saying is at this price point in terms of hardware you're going to be hard pushed to find better and in terms of software if you're going to use third-party applications again plex media server being a big one which i look forward to testing on this it will be interesting to see if this becomes a viable option when comparing against the likes of the ds920 and the ts453d but we'll have to wait and see for now thank you so much for watching i hope you've enjoyed this video i look forward to seeing you on the next one and we will be bench testing this bad boy but otherwise click like if you've enjoyed this click subscribe to learn more and visit the review in the description at nascompares.com with more information about the f4 i'll see you next time